everyone. Uh, my name is Mohan, and uh, I'm a second year master's student specialized in structures. Currently, I'm working with Dr. Moen on a project involved with uh, material testing. So I will be using one MTS machine that is uh, right next to the lab entrance. Uh, this MTS machine is kind of complicated. That's why I made this video after I learned how to use that. So let's see what we have here. Uh, we will have a computer, a MTS controller. We will have a MTS load frame, which is the main body of the MTS. And we have a pump, that is the power source. Um, just some overview. Uh, the model number of this MTS is 370.50, which has a load capacity of 500 kilonewtons or 110 kips. That means both the force transducer and the actuator will have a maximum load capacity with uh, 110 kips in both tension and compression. So before you run your test, you need to do some calculation and make sure that your test will not go over the load capacity. Uh, and uh, the load required by your test will not be too small either, otherwise this force transducer will not provide enough accuracy. Uh, but I mean, and what alternative will be you can attach another, another piece of load trans, uh, force transducer underneath that with a, a smaller range of measurement. So you don't use the one come with the MTS, but you use the, the smaller one yourself, so you get more accurate results. Anyways, uh, so to start with, uh, it will be helpful if you can get two user's manual. One is for the hardware and one is for the software. The one for the hardware you will need to find by yourself. So what you will need to do is just to Google MTS 370 and uh, you will find a manual that is about 150 pages long. And um, that manual will introduce you the parts, uh, the parts of the MTS and uh, some really uh, basic adjustments to the MTS. Uh, for in that menu, I will strongly encourage you to print out a few pages, and I will write them on the board. These are page 31 to 34, which tells you, uh, uh, which includes the parts description. Then page 50 to page 53, uh, which tells you how to connect the cables. But since this one has been already connected, you don't have to worry about it. But just in case you will, like I said, you will need a, a smaller force transducer or you will need a new LVDT to connect to it, you will need to learn this part pretty well. And uh, last but not least, uh, you can print out page 58 to 59, which, is a, which has a brief introduction of the control model. For the menu that teaches you how to use the software, you can find the menu in the computer in the lab. Uh, the name is 793 Controlling Software. So this menu is about 650 pages long, and uh, it comes with many versions, and uh, well, I mean, which including English, uh, Spanish, uh, German, French, and even Russian. Okay, so this menu will tell you how to use many softwares which including project managers, station builder, station manager, station setup, uh, and use station manager to run tasks, and blah, blah, blah. But for the sake of our purpose, you will only need to uh, learn how to use station manager, station setup, and uh, this one. Uh, so for the first two, uh, if you are going to run with a lot of tests or really large tests, you will need to learn project manager a little bit because this will help you to organize the files you will have. And for the station builder, uh, I mean, to be honest, to create a station builder is really hard, so I was using the one count with MTS. Uh, if you, I mean, I don't encourage you to create one yourself, but if you really need to modify one, um, just use the one that come with, comes with the MTS and uh, modify on that instead of creating one by yourself, because that's going to be really time consuming. Okay, so let's go to the test procedure part.
So before you run your test, you will need to check your uh, personal protective equipment. Then you need to check for any leaks, because any leaks in the pump area will be really dangerous. And uh, after all the check is done, uh, make sure you plug in the wires and turn on the MTS controller, which is this thing. Uh, you will need to turn on the MP controller first to allow the MTS machine to warm up a little bit. Then after that, you turn on your computer and uh, turn on the uh, water valve. The purpose of water valve is to make sure uh, the MTS pump doesn't overheat. Um, what you will need to do next is to manually adjust the, the height of the crosshead, which is this thing. Depending on the size of your specimen, you will need to adjust the height of the crosshead. Okay, so after you've done all the adjustments and checks, uh, you can start to run your test. Once you start, once you, uh, once you start your test, uh, you control everything on your computer doing these softwares instead of manual, instead of uh, change anything manually. Uh, there's one exception is the emergency stop button. So for this MPS, you have two emergency stop buttons. One is on the load brick and one is on the pump. Just in case something bad happens, you will need to press the emergency, emergency stop button right away to interrupt the test. Uh, that is to prevent some you know, further damages. Okay, so after you finish your test, you turn off the water valve to prevent the water from leaking, and uh, then you can turn off your MPS and the, uh, your, your MPS controller and your computer. Then your test is done. Okay, thank you. What we have, this is the computer we're going to use, and the MPS controller is right underneath the computer in which you cannot see. Uh, the load frame is back here, and uh, the pump is right behind the load frame. Uh, like I said, before we run our test, you will need to double check that uh, the water valve is turned off, which I already did. And uh, then we can uh, open up our software. So you can look at me a little bit. Uh, what you will need to do is to click Start, Program Files, then you go to MTS793 Software, then, then you click on Station Manager. After the click, there's several windows is going to pop, pop up. Uh, and uh, in this window, it allows you to select the station you want to use. Like I said before, uh, I will encourage you to use the one, the default one that comes with the software, which is mts100kip.cfg. Then you click open. Uh, so after a few seconds, there's going to be a several windows pop up. Still waiting. Okay, here we go. So before you change anything, you need to. Uh, you also need another two windows to ensure that you are doing everything correct. So you go to display, then meters. Uh, then you can see this window. Uh, this will allow you to check the force versus displacement at any time. And the second one is display, also under display scope. This will, this is a plot of displacement versus time. And you can check your displacement uh, versus time plot uh, at any time to make sure that your test is running or not. Okay, so let's start to set up our test. Uh, for my test, it's going to be monotonic. So in the type part, you choose monotonic and you don't change the channel number. And uh, for the control mode, I will be using displacement control. Um, I will encourage you to use displacement control on other tests because this one will minimize the chance of danger. Uh, then in here, for example, in our test, I want a one inch displacement within 30 seconds. So you just manually type in the numbers in there. Then you click enter. Uh, you can either minimize this window or you can close it, it's fine. Um, then you go to this control panel. First thing first, you will need to hit reset to make, to make sure the, all the interlocks are reset. Then um, you click on this checkbox. Uh, this is to uh, enable the exclusive control. So after that, you can turn on your pumps.
and you will need to follow a certain order. Um, so the order will be you click on HPU J25 power low first. Then you go to HSM J28 power low. Then will be HPU power high. Then HSM power high. So after you turn on the pump, uh, you go to menu command. You click on the button. Then you check the checkbox to enable menu command. Um, so in this input box, you will need to specify a uh, vertical coordinate that you want to begin with. So for a compressional test, you want to add a displacement. You want to have a positive displacement. So you go. So you want your actuator to start from the bottom. Uh, the bottom will be uh, positive 3.5 inches and the top will be negative 3.5 inches and zero will be um, in the distance between. So if you want to add a positive displacement, you put in a positive number in here. For example, in this case, I will put a 2.0 inches to start with. Then you click enter. Then you can hear some noise from the actuator in which the actuator will be dropping down to the position you want which is positive 2 inches. Okay, so after displacement was set, uh, you click, you close this window, and uh, double check what we have in here. And uh, so, like I said, we want a 1 inch displacement within 30 seconds. We're all set in here. Then you will need to click on uh, program run. Uh, then in the actuator part, even if you cannot see, the actuator will be going up for one inch within 30 seconds. See, the actuator is rising very slowly, but you can see it keeps rising. Okay, it's pretty much down. So after 30 seconds, you can see uh, the test is done because the program stop button starts to turn red. And uh, that is what we'll need to do in a monotonic compressional test. And uh, just in case you want to do some psychotic test, uh, you change the test type, uh, test type in here to psychotic, and you don't change your channel number, and you don't change your control mode. And in the amplitude, you can put in 1.0. And in frequency, um, to start with, uh, I would encourage you to start with some really small numbers, such as 0 0.5. In fact, 0 0.5 occurs is pretty large. Then you click Enter. Uh, so again, you will need to manually, you perhaps you will need to manually change the height of the actuator to begin with. So if you want a compressional load, let's say we can change to 2 inches again, and the actuator will be adjusting its height by itself. Then you click on close, then you click on run test. So you can see the actuator will be rising up and going down with a frequency of 0.5 first. So after the test, uh, you need to hit the program stop button. Then you will need to turn off the pump by clicking all off. So the sound goes off. Then uh, you may want to save your test results and uh, the t test setups. Uh, don't click save, but you instead you click on save as, so you don't overwrite other files. Then you can just click on the close window button and uh, hit yes, you want to quit. And in our case, I don't want to uh, save my test parameters, so I click on no. 
and uh, allow the station manager a few seconds to turn it off and uh, you're all set. Um, after you turn off your station manager, make sure you close the water valve to prevent any leaks, any water leaks. Uh, okay, so that's all I have for you. Uh, in case you will have any questions, feel free to contact me or the, uh, to contact MTS. Uh, that's it. Thank you. So um, this is the follow-up video to clarify the sign convention of MTS machine. Um, last time I introduced you how to impose a one-inch displacement using MTS. So I used some terms like negative uh, 3.5 inch, positive, positive 3.5 inch. Uh, some of you may not know what does that mean. So let's take a look at it. Uh, the bottom is the actuator, the top is the post -trans transducer, which is attached to the cross head, and you will install your specimen in between. You can adjust the height of your cross head, which is also the post transducer, according to the size of the specimen. So after you've done, you done your adjustment, you install the specimen, and uh, this is the sign convention that MTS used, which will make sense in a minute. So think this as a inverse y-axis. Zero will be in the middle, positive one is on the bottom, and the negative one is on the top. So for any test, you can do it in such a way that to, uh, um, to start your actuator in the middle, which is at zero. So in this case, when you want to impose a compressional force, you will make an order to let the MPS to move upward. So that's why there is a negative sign because compression is negative. And uh, if you want to impose a tensional force, you also place your actuator, I mean, starting from zero, then you pull it up downward to impose a tensional force. Uh, and uh, I mean, in my case, what I did yesterday is that since the total distance of this actuator is able to move for seven inches, we can take advantage of that. So just in case, if you want to display, I mean, if you want to impose a really large displacement, you can do that up to seven inches. So what I did yesterday, I mean, most of us will not need that, but what I did yesterday is to manually input a initial position of the rep of the actuator, let's say, positive two inch. And uh, I want to impose a compressional force uh, that will cause the specimen to um, display, um, I mean, to, uh, to impose a displacement of negative one inch, I mean, to squeeze the uh, specimen for one inch. So to begin with positive two inches, and the end with positive, positive one inch. So there's a difference between one inch. One inch over 30 seconds. And uh, if you will have the size of the specimen, you can calculate the strain. So this is how the displacement control works. And uh, the other point of this video is to clarify that when you, are, when you will need to install the threaded rod, like this one, you need to be really careful. Don't install that with your hand, but I mean you will have to need to put your gloves on because when you try to rotate it, it's gonna cut your hand pretty bad, especially for the new ones. Okay, that's it. Thank you.